Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. If you're new and don't know me, my name is Dustin. I'm the lead pastor here at Known Victory Church. It's an honor to have you uh, with us today. Again, whether you're joining us from the comfort of your home or the comfort of our chairs right here in house, it's an honor that you're here uh, with us today. And uh, we're in a series uh, we started a couple weeks ago called Built to Last. And uh, in this series, we're talking about how do we build a life? How do we build on earth? What we build on earth, how do we build it so that way when the storms come, it won't be shaken? How do we build on the firm foundation? And that's how we started this series a couple weeks ago. We were talking about how we need to build our foundation on the rock and not build our foundation on the sand. And, and it's, it's, it's you know, rock, rock is harder to build on than uh, sand is. It's harder to dig into the rock. It's harder to chisel away the rock. It's harder to build on a firm foundation than it is to build on a weak foundation oftentimes. But obviously we know the firm foundation that we build our life on actually determines so many things in our life. And we have to choose to put in the work and put in the time to actually build in the right place, build in the right location, build on the, with the right material. And then last week we talked about uh, the series talking about Nehemiah and we were talking about rebuilding together, that it takes all of us, you and I, to build. And that not only are we building, we're also fighting at the same time. We got a sword in one hand and a hammer in the other and we're building and fighting for each other and for the generation and we're fighting for the next generation and we're building his church as he's called us to here on earth. And today I wanna share a, a new message called Building Faith. How do we build faith in our lives? What does it take to build faith inside of us? Because faith, if we read through the scriptures, we know that faith is such a key thing that we read throughout scripture. So many of the time we see, look at Jesus, he's talking about faith. How do we build our faith? He often says to people, you have little faith. Faith is a big topic of conversation when you read through the stories and the life of Jesus and we study his teachings. Faith is a key piece to us. And it's something that I believe we have to understand. How do we build faith within us? How do we build faith here on earth inside of us and for our families and for our churches? And the writer of Hebrews he describes faith in this way as he goes into what we call the faith chapter. And in Hebrews 11, verse uh, 1 to 2, it says this, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. So when we read through the stories of, in the Old Testament, we hear stories of these heroes of faith and the faith they had that, that did a miraculous things. And why we hear about them is because of the faith that they had. Faith is the reality of things we hope for. That not only do we hope for them, but we realize that we get to actually carry it and have it. It's not just something that we hope and we have hope in the right thing. And then, and, and then we realize that we actually have access to it and it's the evidence of things we cannot see. Faith brings us hope for the future and a hope grounded in truth and expectation. Expectation of what God can accomplish. Expectation of things in our life that actually God can uh, let go away and we can be refreshed and recreated in him. It's this expectation for the future. And faith brings us evidence of those things that we cannot see. So as we see miracles, what tends to happen is that inside of us, our faith starts to get stirred up and we start to get excited as God starts moving. We see revivals breaking out across the world. We get excited as our faith builds. We see the supernatural interve uh, intervention that happens when God shows up and brings healing to people. We see provision in our faith grows. When we see God do it for somebody else, we can sit and say, if you did it for them, you can do it for me as well. And when we look at the heroes, the list of heroes of faith, we see so many people listed and what they did was by faith. 
and faith alone, right? We see, if you read through it, you see Abel and Sarah and you see Abraham and Joseph and Moses and Rahab and David and Gideon and Samson. You see all these people that we look up to when it comes to faith and we see that it's their faith that made things possible. It wasn't the way they lived their life all the time. It wasn't that they were perfect. It wasn't that they made all the best decisions. It wasn't that they lived the perfect life. It's because of their faith. Despite all the things they did wrong, they're still listed as heroes because of their faith. The faith that actually accomplished the things God had called them to do. That they weren't just called, they were equipped to actually go and do it. By faith, they went. And if you read through it, it's amazing. And I would encourage you to do that. But I often think about, when I look at Hebrews 11, and I look at the Bible, how many people do we not know about during those times that were followers of Jesus, so those who were doing amazing things for God and these amazing exploits? We don't hear all of the stories. And I think if we did get all the stories, the Bible would obviously be a lot longer. In fact, it says that Jesus did so many miracles that the books on earth wouldn't even be able to contain the amount of miracles and things that Jesus did. The Bible would be so much bigger. But the reputations of these people was built by their faith and what their faith led them to do. And their stories still to this day fill our homes with hope, fill our homes with encouragement, fill our churches with with love and joy and expectation that God's going to do it again. The things that God did for them, I believe that God will do again in our life. And as I read through Hebrews 11, it encourages me. It encourages me and, and, and pushes me and, and, and makes me want to do more. It makes me want to have more faith. It wants, makes me want to be a person who's filled with faith, who goes and does things. And people look and say, well, look what God has done through in his life. And look what God has done around him. I want people to know me by my faith. That, that I have faith that God will do something even when it looks like nothing is happening, even when it looks like chaos is around, that it's like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let it move me. I'm not gonna let it sway me. I'm gonna build my foundation on the rock and I'm gonna keep on going no matter what. That's how I wanna be known for. So I think the bigger question I think we have to ask ourselves today is we know how important faith is. I don't think it's a news flash that, that faith is important, but I think the bigger question is how do we grow in our faith? Like how do we build our faith as the scriptures tell us over and over, build your faith, how do we do this? And I have two questions today that I think will help us get a understanding maybe of where we are at when it comes to our faith, an understanding of actually where where we are sitting when it comes to our faith in our life. And so I'm gonna go through these two questions with us today. Number one is who is my faith in? That's the first question. If we wanna build our faith, we have to understand the first question we have to ask is who is my faith in? Now I think for a lot of us, especially me, you know, we call ourselves followers of Jesus. The obvious answer we say is my faith is in God, right? We say that. But I think a lot of us, we say that, but we don't actually act that way. We say, yeah, I have faith in Jesus. I have faith that God's gonna bring a miracle. Yet, as soon as we turn around from that prayer, we're striving and we're not actually doing the things God has asked us to do. And so we're doing, we're trying to create it on our own. Who is my faith in? But I think the reality is that most of us, we put our faith in ourselves. I think it's true. I think we put our faith in what we can accomplish. We put our faith in our intellect. We put our faith in our education. We put our faith in our career. We put our faith in our children. We put our faith in our church. But that's not where your faith is supposed to be. Our faith is supposed to be in in Jesus. But the thing is, is that if our faith is in ourselves, this attitude will leave us disappointed and not only will it leave us disappointed, it'll, lead, it'll leave those who follow us disappointed as well. Because you know what's gonna happen? As a parent, you're gonna fail your children. They're gonna do things and say things that isn't right. And so as parents, as followers of Jesus, our parents, we, our, our hope is to get our kids to put their faith, not in us, but in their Savior as well. To put their faith in the same person, the same being that we put our faith in. We will disappoint the people around us when our faith is in ourselves. And you might say things like, I'm pretty smart. I, 
I got a good education. I know a lot of stuff. I, I'm pretty smart. I know how things work. I can fix things. I, I know how it works. I, I can accomplish a lot. But this is what the Bible says when it talks about leaning on our own intellect and our own ideas in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. So many of us know this verse, yet what we do is we depend on our own understanding when it comes to life. In fact, some of us, rather than go to scripture, rather than go to prayer when things come up, we go on Amazon and order a book we're not going to read. Like we, we have all these books. I have so many books on my shelf that are probably amazing that I haven't even opened because I, ha I like the idea of reading more than I like reading. But we spend so much money and resources on things that actually aren't leading us to a place of deeper faith and they're just kind of things we put on a shelf rather than leaning on his understanding, on his wisdom rather than our own. Because the reality is, is that your understanding is not dependable. You know, in the old days before the internet, you would, you would have arguments with people around supper table or at restaurants. But who was the actors in movies? You guys remember these conversations? You'd be like, I watched this movie and you debate who the actor was. You're both wrong. And, you, and then now it's like, who's that actor? You're like, Google knows, right? And we just like pull out the phone. Like yesterday, um, we, Beth and I were talking about Lion King, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that this actor is this actor. And she's like, I don't think it is. And we're like talking about it, arguing about it. And she's like, so she, I'm, like, I'm like, Google it, right? Like, Google it. And so she gets it, and I'm like, totally wrong. And I'm like, I told you so. I'm just joking, I didn't say that. Um, but, but we lean on our own understanding. A lot of the time, we're wrong. A lot of the time, the, the things that we actually try and go do on our own strength and our own power leads us to devastation rather than to life. And if we want to build our life on the rock, if we want to build our faith, let's stop leaning on our own understanding because our own understanding will fail us. It will fail us. But we have to trust in the Lord with all our heart that in the midst of it all, our eyes are fixated on him, not on our problem. That he's the one who can bring you the solution to your biggest problem. And how does that come? How do we find that solution? Oftentimes it's through reading scripture. Sometimes it comes through having a conversation with somebody and asking for wisdom and, and having these deep conversations about what to do and leaning on his understanding and bringing him into the conversation. That the first place we should go when we have a problem should be less about the internet and more about our God. Just say, God, I need help in this situation. My business is struggling. God, I need some wisdom. I need some insight. I need some input on what I should do. We're, we, 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 we've stopped going to God, I think, in our deepest moments of, of despair or in our hardest moments because we're like, yo, I can do it on my own. I only go to God in, my last, in the last second if I need it. And then we're, what happens is we're, rather than going from victory to victory, we're going from failure to failure. We're wondering why. We've got to open our eyes and open our hearts to actually bring God back into the room. And I believe that God is a God of strategy and design. And if you read through the Bible, you see so many stories where God's understanding, uh, he had an understanding winning strategy that a battle, that they'd go to battle and they would do the opposite of what they're supposed to do and they'd find the victory. Right, if you remember Gideon, right? Gideon, he has this army and God's like, that's too many people. And Gideon's like, I don't think you're right though. Like, I think this isn't enough. And God's like, no, nah, it's too much. So he keeps cutting it down, cutting it down. And then all of a sudden, Gideon looks around. He's got 300 guys around him. He's like, we're about to lose the battle. Like, I can imagine in his mind. Like, that's how my mind would go. Maybe he was a man of valor and bigger faith. But it's like, we got 300 guys. And then the strategy, you know the strategy? It's like, let's break some jars and blow some trumpets. And then they're all going to kill each other. And we're going to win the battle. To be honest, no captain, no sergeant is like, I got an idea, boys, Right? Let's get some jars and break them. They're like, let's like go fight them though. Right? Moses, he comes to the sea. They're all like, we're, we're done. Like the Egyptians are coming. What do we do? God's like, let's part the sea. It's like, can we like build a boat? Like, like, like maybe let's just build a boat. Like, like Noah, like, let's build a boat. I was like, no, let's just part the sea. Sick your staff in the air, put it in the ground, boom. 
It's going to open and we're going to walk across on dry land. That's a, that's, a, that's a strategy that doesn't even make sense. Remember when they're walking around the walls of Jericho, they're trying to go to battle to take this, 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 this fortress. What are they supposed to do? They're supposed to run, walk around the building, blow some trumpets, and then the walls are just going to fall down? It's not a great winning strategy. But it works. Why? Because God's understanding is better than ours. Remember when they built the Ark of the Covenant? If you read through it, it's fascinating because it's so detailed on what God tells them to do. Like, it's like unbelievably detailed. Like, to a point of like, you read through it, you're like, I don't even know what half of this stuff is. Like, they're telling you, like, he tells you what tree to make certain things out of. And it's like, does that tree even exist today? I honestly don't know. I'm not a tree expert. But like, this is the material to use. This is how it's supposed to look. Here is its dimensions. This is what people are supposed to wear. This is how the table's supposed to look. This is how the tabernacle's supposed to work. It's for how it's supposed to look. And it's so detailed. And a lot of us, we don't go to God and we're, at, we're not asking him the question of God, help me in this moment. Help me in, in this situation I'm in. We try and do it on our own. And all those battles we talk about, they wouldn't have won those battles if God's hand wasn't upon it and he didn't give them the strategy for success. I believe that whatever problem you're facing, God has the solution for. And sometimes the solution is one another. Sometimes the solution is a strategy. Sometimes the solution is is just more of him. I I don't know what it is for you, but that's a conversation you have to have with God. Our faith will build when we start to see what he's speaking and we start to live it out and we start to see the victories come. Why? Because it's in his power, not in our own power. His ideas are better. His strategy for your family is better. His design for your workplace is better. We practice our faith by bringing him into the conversation and listening to his words and allowing him to speak. It's so many of us, we don't have space in our prayer life for him to actually speak to us. We're so busy that we open up our Bible, we read a couple words, and we're like, Amazing, and we go to sleep. We gotta spend time listening to what he's saying. What is God speaking to? I think for some of us, what's God speaking to me? We're like, I haven't heard God speak to me in a long time. I don't know if he's speaking. I don't know what he's saying. I I gotta go to work. Allow him to speak into your life. So that's the first question is, who is your faith in? And we gotta shift it from ourselves to our Savior. Number two, is how much faith do I have? I think this is a very important question, and almost for some of us, at least for me, can be sometimes a scary question of how much faith do I actually have? Where is your faith today? See, Jesus, he often rebuked and and asked this question, right? He said when when, when he was calming the storm, he turned to his disciples. What did he say? He said, you little faith. When him and Peter, they're walking on water, and Peter starts to sink, He looks to Peter and says, oh, you of little faith. When he's talking about worrying about tomorrow, he says, oh, you of little faith. And in Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 to 20, we see another account of this happening. And Jesus is saying the same thing again. And in Matthew 17, verse 14, says this, at the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for him, for them. A man came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. And then Jesus says, this is, this is nuts, to be honest. You faithless and corrupt people. How long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Now, can you imagine Jesus saying that to you? You faithless and corrupt people. How long must I put up with you? Now imagine the, like the disciples, they had been healing people, they had seen miracles, they just couldn't, get, they couldn't figure this one out. They had seen so many cool things happen, it's like, you faithless and corrupt people, how long must I put up with you? And verse 18, then Jesus rebuked the demon in the boy and it left him. And from that moment, the boy was well, it's a miracle. But I think for some of us today, maybe you hear Jesus whispering that same phrase to you, oh you of little faith. Maybe you hear that whisper in your mind of, oh, you of little faith. 
But sometimes the smallest hiccups, the smallest things make us so down and make us so frustrated and our faith is so low and Jesus is saying, oh, you of little faith? Maybe little faith for the salvation of your child you've been praying for. Or little faith for your business to start growing and succeeding. Or little faith to step out into a new career. Even though you've been on one career path, God's like, you got to go here. And you're like, I don't know if I can do it. Little faith to share Jesus with our coworkers and our neighbors. And little faith for healing. And little faith for provision. And little faith for our church to grow. And the church across the world to grow. And little faith for our country. And little faith for our leaders. And little faith for our families. I think in my mind, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think this is the same thing God is saying to, I think the church here in North America is, oh, you of little faith. There's so much more. There's so much more we could be doing. There's, there's so much more out there that, that the life you're living, yeah, like we're, we're just trying to make sure that we can get to heaven. That our whole goal is to get to heaven, which is a big part of it. But the other part of it is that while we're here on earth, Let's be filled with faith and bring miracles and bring life to the people we come in contact with. I think often in my life I hear God saying that to me, oh, you of little faith, just believe. Just believe. And then we continue in that story, the disciples ask a question that you might be asking. It's like, why couldn't we cast out that demon? Why? Why? Why am I not seeing the miracle? Why, why am I not seeing the provision? Why am I not seeing it? Like, why? Why am I not seeing it? Have you ever asked that question, why? God, why, why did this happen? Why am I not seeing what you promised? And Jesus says this, you don't have enough faith. I tell you the truth, if you had faith even as a small mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move it from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Why couldn't we do it? How come we can't do it? Why? I think in some ways what Jesus is responding to them is, you can't do it. Only I can. You, you, you can't, like, like you're, you can't do it. It's me, the power of, of the Holy Spirit that, that's gonna come. It's gonna make you powerful to go into the world. When our faith is in ourself, our failure will crush us. But when our faith is in him, our, our, our faith will restore us. See, when our, when, our, when our faith is in ourselves and we fail, it's like, man, look how horrible I am. But when we have our faith in him and he comes through, it's like, God, look what you did. Look at the miracle. Look at the power we've seen. Look at the life change. Look at it happen in this moment. You know, a mustard seed, now I'm not a farmer, okay? I've never held a mustard seed. But they're really small. Some of the smallest seeds you can get. It was fascinating, and maybe you know this, but mustard trees grew very big. In fact, they say like some can grow up to like 30 feet high. And potentially as wide, they say the average height is about 20 feet high and 20 feet wide for one of these mustard shrub trees. But the thing about this is that the faith we need to have, God's not asking for us right now maybe to have the faith like an elephant like the size of an elephant, I mean. He's saying the size of a mustard seed. See, small faith births big dreams. See, small faith births big miracles. Small faith births big ideas. Small faith births big strategies. And small faith births revival in our homes and in our country. Small faith. It's fascinating that he uses a mustard seed, right? Like, like he could have used anything, but he uses the smallest seed, a mustard seed, to say that's all you need to start seeing things happen. Faith, like a mustard seed. And how much faith do you actually have today? Now, for me, I don't build snowmen very often because it's cold, and I don't like snow. I don't like cold. It's not my favorite. I don't build snowmen very often, but when you have children and a wife who loves to build snowmen, you have a great opportunity to build snowmen together. I don't really enjoy the snowman part. I like the family part, but I don't like putting on my boots I bought just for this occasion, right? Like I just have my winter boots just so I can build snowmen with my family. 
And I don't want to like pull my gloves out of my closet and blow off the dust and put them on. Like this is our one time to the other gloves, you know. The build, I don't enjoy building snowmen, but if you build a snowman, you start so small with this little snowball and you roll it and you pack it and it gets bigger and bigger and then you build this huge snowman. And I think in some ways it's the same for our faith is it, it starts so small. Something that might seem so insignificant. It might seem so invaluable. It might seem like, like, like we're having faith or something that's not even that big, but it's like that's where it might start for us. You might have faith that you're going to wake up tomorrow and actually be happy. You might have faith that, 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 that you're actually going to have, be able to have a conversation with your child. It might not be in some ways this big thing. It might be so small. But as we start small, it starts to build and snowball and it starts to grow and our faith grows and then we can start to see things happen and we can start to see places where our faith can be exercised to bring a miracle, not just for us, but to somebody else, that this faith will grow inside of us. Building our faith might start small. You don't start with the mustard tree, you start with the seed, a little seed of faith can birth something so powerful and so big and so important. Do you believe the promises God has spoken to you? Do you believe them? Do you believe that God is building his church and the gates of hell will not prevail? Do you have faith that he's doing that? Do you have faith that if the mountain in your life, do you have faith that that mountain will move? Do you have faith that what you've been hoping for will actually become your life, to become your story, to become your future, what you hope for? Do you have faith that it will happen? And then do you have faith that even if he doesn't, you will stand strong? Even if he doesn't, I will still keep on standing. I will keep on fighting. I will keep on building. Do we have faith that strong in our life? The faith is that our deepest faith is built on the reality that we're saved by grace. So again, once we answer these two questions, who is my faith in? And how much faith do I have? These two important questions. I think we can have a baseline in where we need to start from. For some of us, our faith is maybe like the mustard seed. For some of us, our faith might be like a little sprout coming out from the ground. Some of us, we might start to, have, start to grow a bit. But we're all in different spaces when it comes to where our faith is. And I don't know where you are in your faith. What you're believing for. I, I don't fully know. But our faith grows when we spend time with people of great faith. With great vision who can see a future that we might not even be able to imagine yet. We have to get around people who have been through what we're going through. And get around people that will encourage you to keep fighting and keep building. Get around people who will push you to grow in your faith. Who will push you to pray more. Who will push you to read the scriptures. Get around people who will build your faith. And I think all of us. We all have somebody in our life, I think, that's a hero to us when it comes to faith. And I'm not just talking about somebody you saw on YouTube one time. I'm talking about somebody in your life that you look up to when it comes to their faith. And I think for me, and in my life, and I talk about my mom a lot, but my mom is my hero when it comes to my faith. My mom has been through so many things, as all of us have, so much, yet she still stands strong. The one who's seen miracle after miracle. But do you know what else she's seen? She's seen painful moment after painful moment. The one who's always, who's always praying for me, even when I was running away. The one who kept loving me, even though in a lot of ways I didn't really deserve it. That's my hero. The one who stood strong, who kept on praying, who kept on seeking, who kept on having faith, who kept on believing. Who's your hero when it comes to faith in your life right now? Who, who is somebody that you can get around that will encourage you to have more faith, to keep on going, to build your faith? Who encourages you to pursue the desires God has placed in your heart? We have to have people who will encourage us to start living out what we're called to. And in Hebrews 11, verse 39 to 40, this is what it says. 
It says, and all of these, this is the end of chapter 11, right? The very end. And all of these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. That's how it ends. Since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. See, it says that they were commended by the faith. I'm going to invite Mike up to play guitar here. They were commended for their faith. All these heroes commended for their faith. They said they were known by their faith. Yet they didn't actually receive the biggest promise. They hadn't seen it yet. You know, their faith was all in what they hoped for. All what they had known from the scriptures that they were taught. They hadn't seen Jesus yet. Their faith was, was in something that, they, to be honest, they hadn't really even seen it. They'd seen some of it. They'd seen some power, some miracles. There's moments where they don't see a lot happen, and there's moments where something big happens, and it's just a cycle of, uh, of them seeing the promise. They start to live it out, and then they fail, and then they just go the cycle. It's like really a metaphor for all of our lives. They didn't get to see Jesus' teachings. They didn't get to see him, but their faith was still so strong, stronger than I think my faith is. They, they, their faith paved the way for Jesus. They, they were preparing for Jesus to come as the savior of humanity and their lives all pointed to him. They never got to see him. They never got to experience him on earth in the same way that we do. And we live on this side of Jesus. We have hope, the hope of the empty grave. Yet they hadn't seen it yet. Their faith was really strong. If we want to build our faith, we have to put our faith in the right things to build our house on the rock and not build it on the sand. Build it on the right foundation. That way our faith is not shaken when the storms inevitably will come. I'm going to share my, one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible, and I've preached on this so many times, but Isaiah 43, 19. It says this, he says, behold, I am doing a new thing. I don't have it up, but behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? He says, I will make a way in the wilderness, and I will bring rivers in the desert. We have to perceive what he's doing and know that he's going to make a way. And as our faith rises up, as the faith inside of our church rises up, as the faith inside of our families rises up, we can start to see the way. We can start to see the provision, the rivers, the water of living life coming and restoring our nation. As our faith rises up within us, See, I believe that God is going to do something this fall. I believe that God is going to do something this year. I believe that God is going to do something for each and every one of us this year, but we have to perceive it and know that he's going to make a way. I think we all have things in our life we're praying for. I think we all have things in our life we're hoping for. I think we all have things in our life, these dreams or these promises that God has spoken to us and we still haven't seen them happen yet. God is going to make a way. When there is no way, God always makes a way. Let faith rise up inside of us. And as we walk in deep faith, as our mustard seed starts to grow and becomes a sprout and becomes a shrub and then becomes a tree, people will look to us. And we can start to be their hero when it comes to our faith. They look at us and say, how did you do it? My faith is not in what I can do. It's not in my own understanding. It's in what he has done. And so I follow him. I hope and I know that he's going to provide everything I need. Let us be walking testimonies of God's goodness and faithfulness in our life. That wherever we go, people can see Jesus when they see us because our faith is so strong. It's time to build our faith. And our takeaway today is this, is that small faith births big dreams. When you look into the future, when you look in your own life and what the future could be, 
I think if we want to start dreaming, let's let Jesus be the center of our dream. That what we hope for is more of Him. As we build His kingdom, not our own, His will, not our will, start to dream again of what our family could look like. Let's bring back the old dreams and the old promises that were spoken. Let's start to build them and start to say, that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm going for. That's what God promised, so I'm going to see it happen. God is moving and God is building. So as we diagnose where we are when it comes to our faith and who our faith is in and how much faith I have, let our prayer be, God, give me faith to trust what you say. Give me faith. Again, I think some of us were in a place where our faith is so low, it might be smaller than a mustard seed. Maybe some of us, our faith is growing, it's slow, but it's happening, and we have some setbacks, we have some pushback, but we kind of keep going. And some of us, we're living in this place where our faith is so strong and so big and so powerful, and God's moving. I don't know where you are when it comes to your faith and what God can do. But I want to encourage you, pray that for God. Give me faith to trust what you say. So God, we come before you today. We're humbled and we're, we're, we know that sometimes we put our faith in the wrong things. That our faith oftentimes is in our circumstance or it's in our job or in our family. But God, help us shift our focus. Help us shift our eyes. Help us dig into the rock and build upon that rock. God, give us faith today. Give us faith today to see more people come to know you. Give us faith today to see people getting baptized. Give us faith today for people to be filled with your spirit. Give us faith today for our families and give us, give us faith today for our city. Give us faith. Let it rise up inside of us that we will be known by our faith. Known by how we trust you. Known by how we love you. Known by what you've done in our lives that no matter what, we stand strong and we, we fight together and we build together. God, help us build our faith. God, we pray for strategies for our families and strategies for our businesses and strategies for our church and pray for ideas. We pray for creativity. We pray for life. Where there's dead dreams, God, we pray life comes, that revival comes, that, that you bring life back into the picture. God, help us not be just walking ready to die. God, help us be walking ready to live the life you've called us to live and walk in the faith that we need. God, help us not put you in a box. But God, help us live lives filled with your faith. Help us live lives filled with your love and your joy and your peace. God, I pray for each and every one in this room, those watching online, God, wherever we are, God, I pray that our faith will rise up, our faith will grow. That we won't be afraid. We'll be excited pray for joy. We pray for this, this excitement to come upon us for our church and for our communities, for families, to be sharers of your word and sharers of your love. God, give us faith to trust what you say. In Jesus' name, amen.